Hey, thanks for stopping by today. I'm going to show you how to sync the color palette in Lightburn with your third-party design software like Affinity Designer or Adobe Illustrator. Any of those, this process will work. So the idea is that we're going to create a grid system down here and we're going to set the modes to fill on all of these different colors and we're going to go ahead and, and uh, generate 30 of those squares and we're going to assign each one of those squares to a different color. And at that point, we don't care about anything far as settings are concerned. We're only concerned about the color. And so all of your modes will be fill. And we will want to export those as an SVG. And then I'll show you when we bring them into the third-party design software like Affinity Designer, I'm going to be able to create a custom color palette that I can design from. And that way, if I know that I'm bringing a design back into Lightburn, um, I can pick those colors that already reside here, and that way I don't have to co convert them back. And it's a time saver. So I'll show you how to do this. Step one, we're going to go ahead and just uh, create a rectangle here, actually a square, a quarter inch by quarter inch. The size really doesn't matter because the only thing we're interested in this entire process is the color that's assigned to this particular square. And so... I've go, gone ahead and generated a square, quarter inch by quarter inch. Um, I have made sure that the, fill, that the mode is fill, the settings don't matter, um, but this needs to be in fill mode. And then what I'm going to do is to generate um, the 30 different squares that I need. I'm going to make sure that my square is selected. I'm going to come down here to the rectangular array tool. And I'm going to, since we want uh, 30 colors, I'm going to say I want five across and six down and that should give us our 30 squares and so I'm going to say okay and at this point all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and assign a different color to each one of these squares so like this first one will be black if I select the second square excuse me if I select, select the second square I'm going to say that one's blue the third one is going to be red. The fourth one is going to be green. And you get the idea. So you go along and you select all of your different uh, colors that will give you uh, all your different color swatches. Um, one thing that I like to do is I like to fill them in so it's a little easier for me to see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is come up to here to Window and select Toggle Wireframe Filled. And what that'll do is that'll actually fill in the color. So now it's easier for me. I can select this one here. And the one after green is going to be this kind of off yellow. And you want to make sure that these are filled in. And we'll just go down and uh, select all these different colors. And uh, you get the idea. I won't bore you, bore you with all the uh, different details. But you're going to go ahead and fill all these different. And uh, then I'll come back when these are all filled in. Now that I've got all the colors filled in, so we've got 30 colors here because we start at 0, 0, so there's 30 colors across here. You can include um, the T1 and T2 because they don't have a mode of filler line, so you're going to be, uh, you're going to have to leave those two colors out. Um, so at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to select and uh, export these as an SVG. And what I found, it's, it's easier and better, and most third-party softwares like it when it's color-filled like this um, than if it was just a line. So what we're going to do is we're going to select these, all these boxes, and we're going to come up here to File, Export, and we're just going to dump it to our downloads, and we're going to say Lightburn Color. And at this point, it's exported those each one of those squares as an SVG that has color associated with the vector. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into, in this case, Affinity Designer. And I'm going to show you how to create a custom palette with these particular colors. So next time you're in Affinity Designer or another third-party design software, and you know you're going to be exporting it back into Lightburn, you can use the same colors as what Lightburn uses. Therefore, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, converting.
So let's go ahead and jump into Affinity Designer and I'll show you how to create this custom palette. Okay, I've jumped into Affinity Designer. I've created an 8.5 by 11 page. It really doesn't matter what size this is. I want to make sure that my swatches tab is evident over here. If you don't see a swatches tab over here, you want to make sure you go up to window and make sure that swatches is checked. Therefore, you should be able to see that in a tab to your right. So make sure that your swatches is active. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and place that exported SVG color palette that we generated in Lightburn. We want to bring it in here. So I'm going to go over here to the uh, place tool. We're going to select that. We're going to select our light burn color that we exported. We're going to say OK. We're going to just put it in the middle here. We're going to click it. We're going to go ahead and bring it in here close. So this is the, uh, the exported SVG palette that we generated from Lightburn. And one of the first things that you're going to want to do, uh, I find this works much better if you do this, is I'm going to go to my Layers tab. And right now, these are all one, basically one package. We want to go ahead and select Edit Document. And what that'll do is that'll break out each one of these color boxes as a curve. And that way, we can go ahead and assign um, all these different colors. You're not able to do that unless you do this step. So just remember, you've got to uh, select Edit Document before you go to this next step. Okay, at this point, we've got our uh, embedded document. So we went to Edit Document. It opened it up. If you look at these layers, these are all individual um, curves. So they're all vectors that have been colored in. And this is where our uh, color swatches will be generated from. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we go over to our Swatches tab. Okay. And you notice right now, uh, I don't have any other... Uh, custom palettes. And so what we're going to do is you want to just make sure that this is open. We're going to come up to Create Palette from Document. And when you select that, um, there's two options here. Um, as an application palette or as a document palette. The application palette is one that I recommend because that way, going forward, whatever uh, new designs you create, this palette will be available to you. If we were creating a document palette, it would only be uh, available for the current document that we have open. So be sure you check that uh, you select the application palette, and we'll go ahead and do that. And you notice now that we've got all of these color swatches over here. And it named it as embedded, and that's just because that's the name of the tab. We'll go ahead and change that. So right now, we can go ahead and come up here and say we want to rename that palette. And that's the current naming convention, and we'll just put in light burn color. Hit Enter. And now we see that we've got a color palette that's indicated as light burn color. Now, one of the things that I like to do um, is it didn't load the same sequence. In other words, it didn't start with black, blue, red, green. These are my four primary colors that I use in light burn. I use black for a frame layer, blue for engrave, red for cut, green for score, and then all these others I just ad hoc and use the other end of the palette for my fiber laser. So usually you should be using your color as a function and not as a setting. My color palette up here, I like to have at least the first four colors um, match the way they are in Lightburn. So in Lightburn, they're black, blue, red, and green. And so what I do is I, you can just drag and move these around. And so what I did is I uh, drug the black to be first, the blue to be second, red to be third, and the lime green to be fourth. And those are the primary colors that I'm using for my designs based on function, whether it's a frame layer, an engrave, a cut, or an engrave. Um, here's the other thing. If you want to do it, you can actually right mouse click these and rename the fill. So if you wanted to rename this to frame and the blue one 
to engrave and the red one to cut. Um, then they'll be labeled just in case you hover over them. It'll tell you what it is. And if you have other colors that are special that you use for other things, like on the other end of the uh, all these uh, colors down here, I use for my... Um, for my fiber laser. So I'm using kind of two ends of the spectrum and that way I don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure that our swatches work right. So all I've done is I've just come in here, created some basic shapes and colored them in with our swatches. So I selected the shape and selected the color. Colored these in. I did a little design here so you have an engrave in the middle with a red cut line on the outside. And at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to export this back out of Affinity Designer and into Lightburn. And so the, the one big gotcha you got to remember when you're exporting from Affinity Designer and many other third-party design softwares is when you make your selection and you say File, Export, you want to make sure that you're at a 72 DPI. Um, if you export it at 300 dpi, which is pretty common default, it will come in in Lightburn much bigger than it should be, and it'll blow all your scaling up. So you want to make sure that your dpi is set to 72 dpi, and then go ahead and ex export it. Select your, you know, name your file, and away you go. We've already done that, so let's go ahead and jump into Lightburn, and I'll show you how to import these SVGs that we created in Affinity Designer with the light burn colors and that way we once they get into light burn we won't have to change your color okay we're back in light burn now and we're going to import that file we just saved so i'm going to go file import and we're going to select uh the uh, exported and you notice now it they all come in in the right color um, and so you've got your black your blue your red your green the only thing we've got to do is ungroup this and ungroup it and get rid of the black line that surrounds the design. And the reason it probably came in that way is because it was a grouped SVG instead of uh, individuals. And so I'm just going to ungroup that. I can go ahead and select this and get rid of it, just delete it, and we're right back to where we needed to be. Now it looks like to me that, that this color may have changed which is no big deal. We can normally go ahead and ungroup this and select that, turn it back to red, and we're right back to where we were. And you can see I didn't have to change any of these colors, uh, or at least the, the primary colors that weren't a grouped vector. Uh, and uh, it just saves you a little time. So hoping this information was helpful. If you like the content, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. If you haven't subscribed, I'd sure appreciate it if you do so. Got a lot of exciting content coming up. And if you have the ability, hit that thanks button and contribute to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. Until next time, thanks and have a great day.